Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this, the Two White Muslim Show. We're back. It's Wednesday, it's six o'clock. What else could you expect? Now, it would be slightly remiss if we didn't begin <laughs> by saying... Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name's Junaid Rahim. My name's Muhammad Yusuf Bashforth. And together we're affectionately known as... The Two White Muslims. Now, we know there's three very good reasons for that. Reason number one. There are two of us. Reason number two. We are both white. Most importantly though, reason number three. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are both Muslim, Muslim. and proud Incredibly to proud be to be so. so. My goodness. People will be sick of that. <laughs> They'll be going, oh, tune in at two, one minute, th one minute, three, 30 our, seconds our, in. Our viewers will never tire of this. I'm <laughs> no, telling you. They're, they're very, very loyal. True. They need to be reminded so they can't be offended. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So yes, welcome back. Here we are once again. So, What's going to happen over the next few weeks? Okay, so we're going to be discussing various subjects over forthcoming shows. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is your show. This mm -hmm. is yours. So why don't you call us? Give us a call. Tell us what you think. Ask us any questions. Uh, or even suggest subjects that you might want us to talk about in future shows. But you know, for tonight, mm -hmm. Junaid, we're going to be talking on the subject of unity in Islam. Brilliant. Because you and I are often talking about unity in... Is, uh, in community. In communities. Absolutely. Unity in community. We coined the phrase and we love it yes. because that is Islam. Islam is about being unified, coming together, helping each other, living life to the betterment of those around you so that you too can feel better. So if we consider kind of the world's population, you know when I heard these stats I was absolutely blown away. Mm. I assumed that if we're looking at the, the percentage of say Christians, uh, Muslims, uh, those of the Jewish faith, that Christians would be massively outweighing mm. Muslims. Yeah. Not actually the case. No, it's not. It's not the case. No. If you ask most Muslims, they would know that about 1.8, 1.9 billion people on this wonderful planet of ours are Muslim. That's approaching 25% of the world's population. A quarter. It's a quarter of the world's population. But I kind of assumed, well, there must be so many more Christians. And actually, Islam is currently the second largest religion after Christianity, but not by much. No. Not by much. Um, it's the fastest growing religion in the world. But according to Pew Research Centre, I love Pew. Obviously, pews are what people sit in, in, in churches. <laughs> the Pew Research Centre, which, to be fair, is a, a, a non-partisan uh, uh, organisation that just looks at faith and kind of takes uh, uh, into account you know, different faiths and different statistics about yep. faiths. Um, there are a non-partisan uh, uh, fact tank that informs the public about the issues, attitudes and trends shaping the world. And they estimate that the number of Muslims is expected to exceed the number of Christians very, very soon. Because whilst there's 1.8, 1.9 Muslims, there's only about 2.1 billion Christians. That's you know a what? lot. That's huge. It's a That's lot. Huge. Now, th there are, there's uh, not a huge disparity. We're going to be talking about the subject of giving dawah at mm. some future point, at some future show. Yes. You know? uh, but because this is the, the, the end of the prophet, the end of the lineage of prophets happened with our beloved prophet Muhammad. So May the Muhammad. peace, blessing and mercy yes. of Allah be with him. So we have all got, as Muslims, we have got a prophetic mission uh, and we, we have a duty, we have a, uh, a need. In fact, we are commanded to call people towards the ways of Allah. Yes. Yeah. If so, I interject at this point, how did you find out about Islam? Somebody told me about <laughs> somebody it. Somebody told you. <laughs> how did I find out about Islam? Somebody told you somebody about it. Somebody told me. It. They didn't you know. ram it down my throat, but they told me. They made exactly. me aware of it. And but for me, it was like a light coming on. For you, it was like a light coming yeah. on. There's a lot of lights out there that need to come on. Absolutely. But do you know, with so many Muslims in all parts of the world, there's so much to gain by us just being united mm. in, in, the, in the good cause. Yeah. Our beloved prophet, peace be upon him, was a man of unity. Mm. He ensured that he spread love and kindness wherever he went. 
And just through these actions, he attracted millions of people to join the religion of Islam. Mm. Today, we don't see that. No, it's true. Mm. Muslims are not living the model of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him. If we lived our lives according to the teachings of our Prophet, peace be upon him, then millions of people would embrace Islam. The current Muslims are sadly not the best representatives of Islam. Yeah, That's a some, very sad thing to yeah, say. Yeah, some. You know, if, if uh, we don't want to paint, paint with a broad brush, but if every single Muslim made the same example as our beloved Prophet, wow, wow. And it's weird because unity is actually part of nature. Unity is part of nature. It's, it's natural. Think about human beings. Human beings strive for human interaction and communication. Yes. We struggle without it. You hear about people, you know, who, who, are, who are placed in, in, in kind of um, uh, uh, in isolation for mm. whatever reason, yep. whether it be, you know, through the criminal justice system uh, or just through, you know, uh, older age or being infirm. Isolation is incredibly, incredibly debilitating. Mm. Yeah. It affects us. Unity is part of nature. Without it, certainly the Muslim community would face many problems and challenges. Mm. If you think about, you know, and we've talked about it so many times, the amazing people who brought Islam into this country, into the UK. Alhamdulillah. But also who brought the infrastructure. Yes. Who established the, 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 the shops and the places of worship and the places that people can go so that you know people like you and I yep. who now want to eat halal and pray with other people can do so fairly easily yep. in the UK. Alhamdulillah. Amazing. We owe an enormous amount of oh. gratitude, debt of gratitude to these people yes. who, who brought the infrastructure into this country so yes. that we, as you say, can practice our religion relatively easily. Yes. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Think about the unity that was required there. The guys who came across getting together, the families getting together, you know, meeting in each other's homes, praying in each other's homes, expanding that out to the community, expanding that out into new masjids and, and, and creating shops and this infrastructure. It's amazing. And it shows what unity can do, but how important unity is. And um, sadly, and, and I feel really awkward saying it, but sadly, we're maybe not currently all as single individuals working towards a single goal mm. if you think about it we, mm. we, we're becoming a little bit fractured yep. again if we act as a whole community as we should be helping and assisting each other to reach the ultimate goal which is to to reach jannah life would actually be much easier absolutely i mean having differences is in fact quite normal mm. it's it's natural because differences bring ideas mm. opinions and, and benefit to the ummah Differences also allow us to grow and <coughs> learn uh, various things about this beautiful deen of ours. In fact, diversity and difference is encouraged and respected in Islam mm. as long as it ultimately fulfills the requirements of the Sharia. Mm. If Allah wanted to, he could have made us all the same. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, I often think about that. <laughs> you know, on a computer, copy-paste, yeah. it's just command... Command C, Command V. v it? Command yeah. C to copy, Command V for paste. <laughs> that would have been me yeah. if I was creating Command C, Command V, Command C, all the same. Just go with the E's. Yeah, we've got Shabana. 7 billion people on this planet. We all look different. I, can't, I, I dread to Im even imagine us all being the same because but that means I'd have been like you. <laughs> yes, yes. But even when you look at pictures of people in the past, <laughs> 7 billion people now, but there's many billion people's gone before, all with different fingerprints. Absolutely, all different. You know, fundamentally Subhanallah. different DNA. Subhanallah. Look the same, sound the same. Uh, sorry, look the same, but are different. Subhanallah. Look similar, but look the... Oh, it's amazing. Alhamdulillah. The complexity of that. You know, having differences in opinion in certain areas of this deen uh, should, should not be a reason uh, that we don't unite. Mm. The problem is when someone's following a different madhab or, or not agreeing with our point of view, we're, we're very quick to judge. Mm. And we, we make claims upon our fellow Muslims. But what's required is in fact for us all to agree to disagree, yeah. but stay united. We all share Ashadu Allah, mm. ilaha illallahu, 
wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh this is which is what unifies us yes so whether whether we we have our hands here to pray or here to pray <laughs> or, or yeah. we we or we do this before we go into into raku and, yeah. and sujood or not it doesn't matter yes it doesn't matter the fact is that we all share the commonality of the shahada yes this is what it's all about we are all on the same journey yeah we are all going back to allah Inshallah. we just have to do so without becoming toast as i've said before <laughs> yes uh, yeah. try try to <laughs> try to do our best subhanallah and uh, uh, you know the thing is but the unifying yeah. gives strength yeah. we have strength in <coughs> numbers yes. we have strength in unity and without unity we have nothing yeah yeah subhanallah come on come on guys why don't you go to the next mosque why don't you you know if you're if you're a leader of a mosque if you're on a committee of a mosque mm. why don't you go and visit the next mosque mm. and say hi you know we're all the same you might have a slightly different way of practicing. You might have a slightly different, different viewpoint. Yeah. But we're fundamentally we're all the same. Subhanallah. Yes. Let's, let's just work let, together. Let's just shake hands. Mm. Let's just you know, work together. Exactly. Subhanallah. Yeah. So true. So true. Uh, uh, the 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 weird thing is, you know, when you're saying oh, when we put our hands here or put our hands there, it doesn't matter. Yeah. There'll be people screaming at the television screen. That's great. But it does matter. I know. I know. <laughs> but it I does know. matter. I know. It does matter. It, this is the point that I'm making. I know. This, this is, is the, the point issue. that I'm making. You know. This is the so issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and hold firmly to the rope of Allah all together and do not become divided yep. and remember the favor of Allah upon you. When you were enemies and he brought your hearts together and you became by his favor brothers and you were on the edge of a pit of fire and he saved you from it thus does Allah make clear to you his verses that you may be guided this is chapter 3 verse 103 subhanallah it's unity muslim unity. unity is in fact a fard it's obligatory on us mm. according to the quran and the traditions of prophet muhammad peace be upon him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the believers are nothing else than brothers so make reconciliation between your brothers and fear allah that you may receive mercy and this again is the the noble quran chapter 49 verse 10. Mm. Um, we, we learn from these verses, we learn that we should be united, that unity is incredibly important, it's beneficial and therefore important. We are a single brotherhood, a single, single brother and sisterhood, a single community, albeit worldwide, a community. We need to make peace and reconciliation between us before we can help other people and we need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala motivating us to be united, and be brothers and sisters of one ummah, but also telling us to fear Allah if we transgress. We just kind of need to take heed. Let's look at some of the events that, that have befallen our ummah in, in living memory. Come on. Mm. So we look at the Muslim ummah today, and it is so weak. We just need to look at the suffering of the Muslims in China. Look at the Muslims in Burma, yeah. the Rohingya uh, Muslims. Yeah. Look at those in Kashmir yeah. and Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, the infighting and killing through civil war in Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Afghanistan. To name but a few, mm. the killing of innocent Muslims in present day India. This is happening as we speak. Mm. And this shows how weak the Muslim Ummah actually is. It's unable to defend itself. Yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. And this is because we simply don't talk to each other. Yes. Come on. Yeah. And, and this current weak state of the Muslims um, was prophesied by the message of Allah, peace be upon him, when he said, the nations are about to call each other and set upon you, just as diners set upon food. So it's been foretold. Um, it was said, will it be because of our small number that day? He, peace be upon him, said, rather on that day you will be many but you will be like foam, like the foam of the river. And Allah will remove the fear of you from the hearts of your enemies and will throw wah, weakness into your hearts. Someone said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what is wah? He said, love of the world and the hatred for death. And this was related by Abu Dawood. And if we think about some, some points that we can learn from this hadith, the Ummah will be like the foam on a river, mm. divided 
disunited. Yes. Due to disunity... D the disunited, is, is that the worst name for a football team ever? I think it is, disunited. <laughs> it's terrible. Dis <laughs> Due to disunity, the Ummah has reached a level where it can't even defend its honour, its riches mm. or its wealth from its conquering enemies. The disbelievers have divided the conquered lands of the Muslims between themselves. Mm. It, this is a fact, it's all a fact for all to see. Like uh, diners when gathered round their dish, what do they do? Each one of them takes a portion yeah. of it until he's full. Mm -hmm. And he will not be content with uh, that which is in his plate except that which fills him. So for today, there are plenty of Muslims that they're like foam. They're like foam carried by the waves, separated, divided, and they go wherever the waves take them. Mm. And we, we know how important unity is and how powerful unity is. <clears throat> Last week, we, we, we kind of, we digressed and we were talking about the, um, the fuel protests from, was it late 90s? 90s. I think it was 90s, yeah. wasn't it? Uh, where the, the fuel prices have become so high and the, 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 um, the, the hauliers, the guys driving the big trucks, said, well, we just can't afford to do business anymore. So they didn't. And they, they resisted passively by just going incredibly slowly on the motorways. And they basically closed the UK down for several days. What was interesting was that the people of the UK didn't mind. No. They were behind them. They yep. agreed. Yep. There was a, a unity across the entire UK. It was extraordinary. In the news today, guess what it said about fuel prices? Go on. It's the highest. They've, they've gone up week by week by week by week for two years running. Do you and know what? The this I, in the UK. I actually filled my car up today. Right. And you know. Uh, did you not, feel it? <laughs> oh, did I feel it? Because I filled it right up to the very top. It's yes. not often I do this. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, 20 yeah. pounds. Can I get 20 quid in? 20 yes. pounds and see how far I get. Yeah. 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 But I filled it right up to the very top. It cost me a fortune. Yeah. Yeah. I've never spent that on a tank full of this fuel before. Extraordinary. Crazy. But the unity of everybody get together. Uh, oh, by the way, there was somebody that, because it, it said, you know, oh, the fuel prices are the highest as ever. And a woman rang into to Radio 5 Live and said, don't matter to me, I only ever put £30 in at a time. <laughs> 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 oh, you're not quite getting it, love. Sorry, um, I'm sorry. But it was a, a great demonstration of unity, the power of unity. People actively seek leadership. People actually want to be part of something yep. that matters. Yep. And this mattered. So people got behind it. Yeah. And it was amazing. And, and I, I, the reason that we were talking about it last week is I was telling my kids about it because uh, child number one, my oldest son, as we were driving here, went, didn't you once play football on a motorway? I went, yes, I did. And yep. he was doing that. Because yeah. it, it, uh, England stopped. We were there for eight hours. So we thought, what we're going to do? We'll play football. Um, I believe we've got a call coming through. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah wa rahim. Two white Muslims. Are you all right? Junaid and... Uh, and Yusuf. And Yusuf. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We're fine, yeah. thank very, you. Very, very well indeed. Thank I you so much. I just can't understand sometimes, you know, when I look at it. This is, see, a Muslim is a Muslim, whether he's black, white, <laughs> yellow, green. <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah. correct. Absolutely right, yes. So... The thing is, you know, one of the biggest things with you, so, you know, like I was saying last week, we have to look, before we can understand religion, we have to look at the, the basic foundations of religion. Yes. And if you read the Bible, you know, the, the, the theme of the Father's punishment, mm. This is in the Bible, in Exodus. If you read that, you see the God has said, I am a jealous God in Exodus. And he says, I will punish those. You know, we're talking about, I will punish those who stray from the path mm -hmm. that I have given them. Whether we're Muslim, whether we're Christian, or whether we're any other faith, whether we're Hindu, we all have an obligation to our maker. And this is the thing that our, one of the biggest problems that we face is that we forget that our punishment, you know, the, the, you were saying, you were talking about the Palestine and all these Rohingya. Mm. What these are, these are punishments of the sins because we did not have unity. Mm. 
after the holy prophet the three uh, the five rightly guided caliphs that came after we murdered them all yeah mm. if you, i have a book a priceless books in my collection worth millions of pounds and one of the books is a is a 150 year old book on islam and it's got a a, a map which says this is for christian knowledge Mm. right it's on a psalm yet it says it's for christian knowledge yeah. to furtherance of christian knowledge and it says half the world is a psalm is an psalm if you go right the way through the the balkan states and the you know like a greece and everywhere yeah. and all these all these things yusuf and jinaid this is where we went wrong mm. this is why god is we are at the end of the world now we are at the end of the, the apocalypse the apocalypse Apo- these are all apocalyptic predictions prophecies mm-hmm. that the holy prophet said this is going to these events are going to occur and i wrote, wrote about them inshallah my book will be coming out an act of god gross negligence all the money will be going to charity inshallah assalamu alaikum and god bless you wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh what a great point what an incredible and it's so true i mean first of all you know you quote exodus which is one of the five books of the Old Testament and the Old Testament was very much about almost like it, it, it's the rule book it's yes. the it's the rules it's like establishing yeah. the rules and it mentions punishment it mentions love and it mentions punishment yep. and it makes it very clear and as you rightly say i think people kind of lose sight of the fact that you know we run towards that which we love and we try and avoid that which we fear but you've got to fear it and you've got to love it for it to be Absolutely. Any form of absolutely a, of an incentive, and so you know the, so right. the the brother made such a good point uh, when he was uh, when he was talking about this is what they did back then. Yeah, and it's okay talking about what people did, mm-hmm. our ancestors ancestors did back then, but what we have to do, we we continually have to strive to look forward. Absolutely, we have and to do look forward now. and do something absolutely. about it. Yes, you know because if everybody sits on the sides like sidelines and say. says oh well that was our ancestors that did that yeah. so there's nothing we can do yeah. then i'm sorry but we we have to continue yeah. to do something and at least you know it, it, and if if uh, 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 our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him said if you see oppression if you ah, see oppression anywhere yes. Yes. yeah you must fight it with yeah. your hands yes and if you can't fight it with your hands you must fight it with your tongue yeah you must speak up against it and if you can't fight it with your tongue you must fight it in your heart yes. You know and that that's a, that's a very very simple but very very powerful lesson. Yes. You know yeah. and this is that we cannot sit back and just allow what happened in the past to continue to happen in the future. Yes. We have to do something about it and the only way that we can do anything positively into the future is to do it from a united stance. Absolutely. It's as simple as that. Uh, a very famous Christian whose whose name unfortunately uh, escapes me. uh was quoted as saying the one thing we learn from history is that we don't learn anything from history that we don't learn from history that um, was in fact henry ford oh right with well, henry we ford ah, said okay, that okay my goodness the one thing we learn from history yep. is that we don't learn from history so i think as muslims we've got to change that absolutely got to change that absolutely got to look at what's happened previously and think right how do we do this differently today our mission yes. is to what uh well i mean change the world yeah change the world it's not hard is it no. you, as you rightly say you, you change the world just by being in it yeah it's how, how you, you change, change it. it that matters how you <laughs> change it you know so, amazing you know what, what what do we learn from from the hadith of our beloved prophet well Muhammad? i mean if we talk about unity within islam you said that the, the prophet peace be upon him has said many things and they're amazing when you start listening to them the prophet peace be upon him stressed the importance of unity from this in the hadith of uh Hudafa uh, 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 uh may Allah be pleased with him in which he said the people used to ask the messenger of Allah peace be upon him about the good and i used to ask him about the evil out of fear that it would reach me so i asked the messenger of Allah o oh messenger of Allah we were willing uh, we were living in ignorance and evil when Allah brought this good to us so will there be any evil after this good <laughs> what a great question He replied, "Yes." Yes. I then asked, "Will there be any good after this evil?" He replied, "Yes, yes. but it will be tainted." Mm. So I asked, "What will be its taint?" He peace be upon him replied, "A people who guide others to other than my way, 
You will approve of some of their actions and disapprove of others. I yeah. further inquired, then is there any evil after this good? And he said, yes, call us at the gates of hell. Whoever responds to their call, they will be thrown into the fire. I then said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, describe them to us. He said, they will be from our people and speak our language. I asked, so what do you order me to do if that reaches me? And he said, stick to the Jamaah, uh, the united body, the Muslims and their Imam, their, their ruler. I further asked, well, what if they have neither Jamaah or Imam? He said, then keep away from all those sects, even if you have to bite upon the roots of a tree until death reaches you whilst you are in that state. It's from both Bukhari and Muslim. This is not something well, that's just happening today. It was happening throughout the throughout and the history. And it was prophesied 1,400 yes. years ago. So what, what can a great we question. What a great question, though. Oh, there's all this good now th that follows evil. Well, yeah. will there be any evil? Yep. Will yep. good follow that? Yes. Yep. Will, will evil, evil follow, follow that? that? Yep. <laughs> will good follow that? Yes. Yes. yes wow. Subhanallah. Wow. Subhanallah. What, what vision. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, what, but what can we learn from this hadith? Well, uh, the Muslim Ummah need to be united and follow the teachings of Islam in its totality and truly put the focus on our Akhirah. Mm. We have to think about the next life. We're strongly required to adhere to the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, like having to even bite upon the roots of a tree and to die in a state of Islam, as in the saying of Allah, and do not die except as a Muslim. Mm. So I, I suppose it's important to ask, well, well, why are Muslims or the Muslim Ummah, why is it so disunited? What, what's creating that? What's the cause? Because if we understand the cause, then it can be solved, it can be sorted out. Well, Muslims today, we are in large numbers and they grow in numbers every single day. However, at the same time, they are often considered the weakest of nations in every country they are in. Uh, and they're being persecuted. Why? Well, because they've become like foam, like the foam on the waves, as we mentioned previously. The Muslim oil constitutes approximately one third of the world's resources. Think about that. The Muslim oil constitutes a third of the world's riches. Yet, we're still some of the poorest people on the planet yeah. as, as Muslims. Um, <sighs> extraordinary. Um, so why? Why? Well, because they do not possess anything from their deen, their religion, except by name. Most of the revenue is squandered and is, is misused. Mm. It's not used for the right reasons. Instead uh, of investing in economic development, infrastructure, education, welfare and what have you, you know, it's, it's used to wrap um, Rolls Royces in gold. Yes. By yes. resources. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I, I shouldn't be saying that. I feel terrible. But no, it, but, it, but it is a fact. Yeah. It is a fact. These are our Muslim brothers and sisters yep. doing what I would suggest is exactly the wrong thing. Yeah. yeah. And not paying any heed whatsoever to the teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be yes. upon him. Yes. Crazy. I mean, today, when we think about the disunity among the, the Ummah, mm -hmm. uh, today we have so many divisions. We have so many sects. Yep. We've got the Diobandis. Yes. We've got the uh, Ali Hadith. Yep. Brailvi. Yep. Uh, Jamaati Islami. We've got Sunni. We've got Shia. Yeah. We've got the practice of ethnic mosques. We all know about ethnic <laughs> mosques. <laughs> For a minute, I was thinking, you've what? Got the, uh, no, you've yeah. got the Bengali mosque. Yeah. You've got the Pakistani mosque. Yeah. You've got the Somali mosque, the Indian, the Arab, etc. Yes. Now, this is you've not... The chicken mosque. We've got the chicken mosque. <laughs> <laughs> chicken mosque. So that's, that's our, that's really our mosque in Wakefield. That's our mosque, mosque in Wakefield. It just happens it's to be above a chicken shop. Yeah, so, so everybody calls it the chicken mosque. The chicken mosque. It's the chicken, <laughs> <laughs> it's the chicken You know, this, this is, the, having these ethnic mosques is not what our dean teaches us. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, if there's one masjid in the neighbourhood, there's no need to build another one mm. from a different ethnicity yeah. just because... It, it, it happens to be run by somebody, somebody of, of a, a, a different ethnicity. Yeah. So yeah. how can we call ourselves one Ummah? Mm. How can we do this when we, when we do this practice of building ethnic mosques? Mm. It's crazy. So then there's uh, different states and nations fighting among themselves. It's, so for example, in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, mm. Afghanistan. You know, uh, th th we have oppressive regimes and we have corruption. Mm. Uh, at a local level, we have the differences in moon sighting. 
Yeah. The, the moon wars every single year yeah. it happens. Yeah, I saw the moon. No, you didn't. It's tomorrow. Yes. I saw it yesterday. Yeah. No, you can't have done. It's yeah, today. When yeah. your non-Muslim boss is saying, so I want to give you Eid off. What day do you want off for Eid? And you go, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Oh. And I won't Why know not? until the night before. Because they're, all, they're arguing. Who are arguing? Mm, everybody. Yeah. Everybody. You know, we have uh, d differences in moon sightings, for example. The negative mm. consequences of this. It affects school, it affects work, it affects family and uh, ulama, losing respect. We lose respect of non-Muslims yeah. because it seems that we don't even know when our own celebrations mm. are going to be, you know? So uh, the, there has, in fact, been known to, to have two Eids, even in the same household. Can you get your head around that? Wow, I thought you were going to say in the same city. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, no, that's a given. in the same household. Really? Because dad they goes go to, to one mosque. mosque and oh. sons go to that mosque, etc., oh. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So two Eids, two different days of Eid in the wow. same house. I mean, how th that just doesn't make any sense at all. So mum and, and sisters are eating. Yeah. And having a, and having a whale of the time. Well, dad and brothers well, are, fasting. are still fasting. Oh yeah. man. Crazy. I mean, how did we get to this stage? Come on, mm. ask yourself, how did this happen? What's happening? Yeah. Are, are we breaching unity rules in Sharia? Mm. I think yes, we are. Yeah. And yeah. it's also really interesting, you know, Allah. the more you think about these things, um, our, our, our beautiful caller, when he, first thing he said was, oh, two white Muslims, uh, colour doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It what? doesn't. This is exactly doesn't. what we're saying. This is what we're when saying. When we call ourselves the two white Muslims. It doesn't. It <laughs> doesn't matter. The prophet, <laughs> peace be upon him, said, no, white is better than black. No, black, black is better than white. No, Arab is better than all. No. No. <laughs> what he didn't say was, there are no Arabs. There are no blacks. Yeah, there, there are, are no, no whites. whites. These all exist. But none of them are better than any none of, of the others. None of them are better than anybody else. And I think about yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah. Who was was a Muslim? Who yeah. you know who who openly admitted that he was following a shall we say distorted view yeah. of Islam yeah. um, when he was originally in America. Yep. Uh, and it was very much no. I, we we are the we are the black Muslims. Yeah. And I don't want anything to do with. You, you, you absolutely. White. Well, he was an activist, wasn't oh, he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I have to say, rightly so, absolutely. when you look at De how people definitely. were treated in America. Oh, my definitely. goodness. Yeah. But he brought it within his religion. When he went to Hajj. Until he went to Hajj. Yeah, when he went Until to Hajj. Until he went to Hajj. changed. He couldn't believe it. Nope. Because what did he see in Hajj? He saw the whitest of whites. Yes. The blondest of blonde. With the, the bluest, bluest of, of eyes. eyes. Yeah. All uh, standing side yeah. by side and doing exactly the same thing in complete subservience yes. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. he wept. Yes, he did. He wept because the realisation was, ah, we are united. Yes. We are together. We as, are one ummah. As people, as, as an ummah, we are united. What we need to do is fight oppression, which he yes. was doing. Yes. And that means welcoming people yes and it, I remember it's hearing the story and, and weeping myself and thinking oh my god the realization thing must have been amazing yeah. wouldn't you just love to, to meet him and have that conversation oh, come on it's just such an inspirational story yep and he saw this on Hajj yep he saw this oh there are so tingle. many people you know the, 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 the there's uh, so many people say oh if I could go back in time and meet so-and-so yeah he's one yeah. of them for absolutely. sure, absolutely. Yes. I'd meet yeah. him. I'd, I'd invite him round for a cup of tea. Yeah, amazing. Anytime, oh anytime. So, amazing. so um, uh, brothers and sisters out there, we're talking about the subject of unity yes. and the problem of disunity within our ummah. Yeah. It's a, such an important subject. Uh, we're going to go to a break very shortly, mm -hmm. so charge your cups, uh, get, <laughs> yeah. you, get yourself a cup of tea. We're unified in liking tea, coffee, Abs and uh, uh, <laughs> <parata>. <laughs> Okay, we'll be back very shortly after this, inshallah. Inshallah. As